hoping to hear from our correspondents Paula Sleer and Belle True, who are trying to get to their broadcast point at the moment to uh, give us an update on the developments there in Tahrir Square. As you can see, thousands upon thousands of people are there, and uh, parts of the Egyptian army have reportedly been put on high alert status as that military ultimatum for President Morsi to resolve the violent crisis has now passed. So this is now a crucial moment here in Egypt. Bell True joins us live from Tahrir Square. Bell, uh, we're going to talk to you now. We can see we can see those thousands of crowds, as I've just been describing a few minutes ago, gathering there in the capital, pushing for any possible solution to the crisis. Tell us, how is the situation developing now? Well, time's up. The 48-hour window that the military gave the president to fulfil the demands of the Egyptian people is over, and everyone here at the presidential palace knows that. Thousands of people have gathered across the nation for the fourth day of protest against the president, Mohamed Morsi, calling for his ouster. Here at the presidential palace, teams are jubilant and defiant, almost celebratory. They feel they have won. They might see the president step down at any moment soon. People are banging drums, people are singing, people are dancing. I don't know if you can hear the whistling, but it's a very festive atmosphere here. In addition, I'm hearing slogans of the people and the army and the police are one hand. The people here feel they have the security forces on their side. They feel they have the government on their side. After mass resignations in the Morsi administration over the course of the last few days. They feel they have the formal political op opposition on their side. And crucially, they have the Egyptian will of the people behind them. They feel that the president might resign any minute now. This comes after a very difficult year for Egypt. Talking to protesters over the course of the last few days, they tell me that the Egyptian economy is in free fall, and this is translating into chronic unemployment. In addition to fuel and water shortages, a bread crisis, human rights abuses, what protesters have told me is that nothing has changed since the January 35 revolution. They blame Morsi and they also blame his intimate group, the Muslim Brotherhood, who they want out. They say the Muslim Brotherhood has taken over power. So what people are asking for at the moment is a new president. They're asking for a new constitution. They say the constitution was drafted by an Islamist-dominated constituent assembly and pushed forward by the president. They don't want to, they want a new one. They also want a technocratic government uh, that will fully represent all the political factions in Egypt. So right here in the presidential palace, people are gearing off for an army statement. There's very much an atmosphere of anticipation as people wait to see if their demands have been filled. The president, Mohamed Morsi, will step down. Okay, thanks very much indeed, Belle. Well, Paula Slear is also there, live in Tahrir Square. But before I talk to her, Belle, I just want to quickly ask you, you're saying that there's a feeling of celebration and festivity there, and yet we've been seeing and reporting about violence and people dying. So is there any chance that what's happening behind you in Tahrir Square could turn ugly and violent, just briefly? It looks as if uh, she can't hear me there. Well, let's well at now... the moment, it doesn't seem as if violence is on the cards. But what we do understand is that in the coming hour, the army is likely to issue a statement. It's taken over Egyptian state television. And what the army is going to say, if it's going to say true to its roadmap, is that it is dissolving the parliament. It is instituting an interim council. People here are talking about some kind of technocratic government. And at the same time, it's going to call for fresh presidential and parliamentary elections within the year. Now, an advisor to the Egyptian president, Morsi, has said that this amounts to a military coup and it needs to be called by the right word. And certainly there are concerns here that a military coup is on the cards. Let me remind you that Egypt is a deeply divided country. You have pro and anti-Morsi supporters. You have people from across the political spectrum. There is talk of a possible civil war if indeed the army steps forward and conducts this military coup. The army is also backed by the United States. In the last year, since Morsi took up the reins of presidency, America trained, funded, and assisted to the tune of $1.3 billion the Egyptian army, which is why questions here are being asked if indeed the Americans are going to be propping up a puppet military army. There is also some concerns that if the military takes over, you have your more moderate Islamists who are going to become more radical. And that's the irony of the situation. People behind calling for the Muslim Brotherhood President Mohammed Morsi to step down. But ultimately, you could see a more Islamist Egypt emerge.
Thank you very much indeed, Paula. And uh, that's our correspondent, uh, Paula Slit, and also Bell True, live in Cairo. We'll hear more from them as uh, developments continue over the next few hours. Thank you very much to both of you.